Hi, I'm Randy Thayer, plant manager here at Doraville Assembly. And it was a proud moment for all of us when Fox 5 aired live their morning show from right here at our plant. It took three hours of live interviews on Friday, February 6th. But not only that, they were in the plant for two full days previous to that at the beginning of the week, taping our employees, getting ready for the actual live show on Friday morning. I can only say it wouldn't have happened without the support and enthusiasm of all the Doraville employees. There were a lot of people involved, both hourly and salary, and not just the folks on the camera. There were a lot of folks behind the scene all week that helped make this a success. So I just wanted to say thanks to all the Doraville employees who helped make this a very special day, but also to show Atlanta how special we are. And you know, I'm not the only one that feels that way. Both Jerry Elson, our Vice President of Midlux, and Fred Shasma, the Vehicle Line Executive for the minivan, also want to extend their gratitude to all of our employees. And after you hear them, just sit back and enjoy the tape of Good Day Atlanta. Hello, I'm Jerry Elson, General Manager of the Midsize and Luxury Car Group. Now I'm here in my Warren office in uh, Michigan, and I have just recently watched the uh, Good Day Atlanta presentation that was done at the Doraville plant for the Fox uh, Channel 5 there in Atlanta. And I would say I was uh, basically overwhelmed. Number one, that uh, you'd have such a good program in the Atlanta area. And number two, that they'd come into the plant and spend such a great deal of time. Uh, the version I watched was a little over 60 minutes long, but it was absolutely a fantastic tape. And I was really pleased with uh, the people in our Doraville plant. Uh, I think you did a fantastic job. Every one of you presented a positive image for the community of Atlanta, of what your plant's all about, what General Motors is all about, and what our product is all about. Now, I know you've had a difficult startup in Atlanta when we brought this new GM 200 van down there, but you've done a great job on it. The vehicle is being well accepted in the market and our sales penetrations are starting to go up. Due to the complexity of this vehicle, it's always a challenge for the plant to uh, absolutely build the best vehicle in the market. I think we're on that track. And with the attitudes and the enthusiasm and the cooperation that was displayed during this uh, filming of uh, Good Day Atlanta, I am very confident that you're ready for the challenge that we have here in the 1998 uh, model year as uh, we have some stiff competition out there against Chrysler and Ford and Toyota in particular. But again, uh, on behalf of uh, the team down here in Warren, I just want to thank you in Atlanta at the Doraville plant for a positive image, for a great job, and uh, taking that extra step to be a good citizen for the Atlanta community. Good day. Fred Chasma here, Vehicle Line Executive for Minivans. Thanks for an outstanding job during the live telecast from the Doraville plant. I enjoyed being part of that, and I am very, very proud of the job that you did. I had a lot of fun. Hope you did, too. There's a lot of pride at Doraville, and it's reflected in those products, and now also on television. You have an awful lot to be proud of. The Chevrolet Venture received a J.D. Power Appeal Award. The Consumer Best Buy for 1998, and the Pontiac Transport Montana scored number one as minivan for Car and Driver magazine. More importantly, our customers are giving us great feedback, and that's what really counts. But we've got to stay on it. Remember, quality is the name of the game. So it's great people and great products, and that's what makes General Motors a great place to work. Now, as they say in Hollywood, on with the show. Plus, Gravier is taking us inside the GM plant in Doraville this morning. You guys got that right. I've got my safety goggles ready, and we're going to show you around the plant in Doraville coming up. All right, Gravier, all of that plus weather and traffic first or just ahead on Good Day Atlanta. Good morning and welcome to Good Day Atlanta. I'm Shirley Washington on this Friday, February 6th, 33 degrees outside. And I'm Ken McLeod. Welcome aboard on this Friday morning. 
Well, you know, Gravier, she's already been put in, put in charge of doors or windshields yes. or something. Uh, Gravier, uh, if you don't know, is spending the morning at one of the bigger companies in the metro area. She is down at General Motors. That's right. She's at the Doraville assembly plant. Good morning, Gravier, and how's my car coming along? <laughs> hey, listen, you guys, I couldn't figure out why they sent a girl who always has problems with her car to the General Motors <laughs> in Doraville, but I guess I was wondering that. that. The, uh, the whistle just sounded a couple of seconds ago. The first shift started arriving here about 5.30. They get going at 6 o'clock. You can see some of the, uh, the vans moving around behind me already. And coming up, uh, over the next three hours, we're going to give you the history behind this amazing plant. We're going to talk to some of the workers, and we'll show you how vans get put together from beginning to end. It is an amazing place. We, right now, are in just a small fraction of this 3.6 square mil, uh, square square mile plant 3.6 million square mile plant so we're going to show you around coming up in just a few minutes all right lance thanks a lot we're at the general uh, motors plant in doraville right now and i gotta correct myself earlier i said that this place was 3.6 million square miles i don't think so 166 acres, 3.6 million square feet. Does that sound better? Right now, we're going to show you a, a, a portion of this plant. This is where the tires get put on. And Herman, you're one of the guys. Herman Murphy works here. He's worked here 28 years. And this is part of what you do. Yes, this is what we call the nest. This is what you call installing the uh, tires on the wheel. Uh, it's a wonderful job. <laughs> and he's going to keep on working while he visits with us because otherwise, Herman, some of these vans... All right, have at it. Herman's worked here 28 years. He is uh, one of the people, one of 4,000 employees that work in this plant. It's an amazing place. And do you ever get bored? No. Why should I get bored? If I get bored, I wouldn't come to work. <laughs> Herman, thanks a lot for talking to us. We'll be back with more from General Motors in just a few minutes. Don't go away. All right, Gervier, and I can't wait to see what my new van is going to look like. <laughs> Pick a color, right? So any color will do. All right, Gervier, okay. we'll check in with Thank you in just you. a few minutes. Then the back of the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville. We're in the area called uh, the Carriage Marriage Area. Good reason for that name. What you're seeing behind me is the uh, the top of the vans that are produced here, married to the bottom. Take a look at this. You can see that they come around on the line and then are put together. They produce about a thousand vans a day. Amazing. A van a minute comes off the line here at this assembly plant. And throughout the next couple of hours, we're going to be talking to some of the workers and also showing you the other parts of the van as they get put together with the, the gas tank, as it goes under, all the tests that are done here. Some of these workers are second generation workers at this assembly plant. Their fathers used to work here, and now they're here as well. So we're going to be back from General Motors coming up in the next few minutes and throughout the next couple of hours. Back to you guys in the studio, Ken and Shirley. All right, Gravier, thanks a lot. She is uh, going to set a fashion a trend with those goggles, right? That's right. <laughs> We're back at the General uh, General Motors assembly plant. This may not look, not look like a plant because it's just a portion of it. This is a fitness center. You know, they have more than 4,000 employees here, so guess what? They want to make sure they're in shape. They get a workout. Some of them we saw here this morning before they started their shifts here at 6 o'clock. They have two shifts. The first one comes in at, at uh, 6 in the morning. The second one uh, a little bit after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So busy, busy place. And I'm Gravier Dinsa getting a workout at the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville. Coming up, we're going to take you back out to the line to show you how the amazing minivans are put together here in Doraville. Stay with us. <laughs> well, right now, we want to check back in with Gravier. She has joined those 4,000 GM employees who work down at the GM plant in Doraville this morning. And she's inside a place most people never get to enter. Good morning, Gravier. Good morning, you guys. I tell you, it's an amazing place. It's sort of a gee whiz when I walked in to, uh, to imagine that they produce five different products, five different vans are made on the assembly lines here. So you might see one, uh, one type of van coming down the assembly line, and then right behind it, a different make. And those 4,000 workers workers work like clockwork here and coming up in the next uh, hour and a half or so next couple hours we're going to be talking to some more of the workers here also we'll be showing you some of the rigorous tests that these vans have to go through before they send them out to uh to places all over the country and all over the world because this is a worldwide operation so back to you guys in the studio all right career thanks a lot we will look forward to that 
Yeah. Elton Dinza. I like that look. <laughs> That's right. With a different uh, it's, eyewear. It's a fashion You're in the thing. market for a van, aren't you? Uh, eventually. I, no, I, I was there not too long ago yeah. doing, doing a little speech. It is remarkable to see how quickly and how efficiently the autos are made there. It's, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's like candy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, although it's, you know, I hate to right, say that, right. but it's like a conveyor belt, and they, yeah. each, each person has their own role the, and duty. It's really line. organized, isn't really, it? I mean, it has it's to be. amazing mm -hmm. how it, it zips right along, mm -hmm. and everybody knows exactly what they have to do exactly. and how much time they and have And they're to all do happy, it. it seems, you know? That's good. Are they going to be happy with the forecast? Uh, so back to Gervier at GM. Gervier, what's coming up out there? Tell you what, this is what is called the underbody line here at General Motors. As you can see, that what they do is put the guts of the vans in. And coming up, we'll find out more about that. Talk to a couple of workers. Stay with us. Javier, how are you doing today? Listen, I'm doing great. You know what? This place is absolutely amazing. Everybody has a specific job. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. But the neat thing about it is, when one of these guys stops to talk to me, Somebody else picks up the slack, so nothing ever stops here. It just keeps right on like going. We're in the underbody area of uh, the GM plant, and joining me now are uh, Tim Stansberry, who sort of, this is your area of specialty here, and Grady Hendricks, who is one of the uh, the employees here. Grady, how long you work here? Uh, I've been with General Motors for 20 years. And and tell me what you do here. Well, my job is installing the battery. <laughs> is that a tough job? I mean, of course, that's that's one of the most important parts of the vehicle. No, it's not a tough job. You just have to learn to run the job, and once you learn it, it's, it's an easy job. You've been here 20 years. This plant has undergone uh, six expansions. Of course, now you make vans. I know you've seen a lot of changes. Lots of changes. <laughs> Things a little bit easier now. It's more automated. It's, it's a little bit easier, but the, some say the work is harder, but it's just a little faster. You just have to learn to speed up with the line. I guess so. Well, you guys do good work here. Tim, tell me about this area right here. Okay, in this area we install the air conditioning uh, harnesses uh, and the brake harnesses as well as the front, front bumper reinforcement. Okay, and Paul is doing that now. All right, let me walk over here and talk to Paul. Paul, right. explain what you're doing here. This is Paul Sims joining This is me. the uh, facial support that uh, the body color cuddler facial will go over this. This is the manifest, all the codes. Everything that we put on this job from here to the end of the line is read off of this ticket right here. Now, how, how long have you worked here? Uh, 35 years. You've seen a lot of changes, too. Keep at it. We'll get out of your way. Coming up, we're going to continue to uh, make our way around the plant. And you would be surprised. You know, we've talked to a bunch of men here right now. But believe it or not, 20% of the workforce at GM is women. Not your stereotypical women, either. Of course, Melissa's going to uh, explain all that to us coming up a little bit later on, and we'll, we'll visit with some of those women. Back to you guys in the studio, Ken and Shirley. All right, Gravier. Paul said he's been there for 35 years. The plant's only been open for 50 years, so he's, he's seen most of the time. You got that right. They celebrated their 50-year anniversary just last year. Last year, that's right. All right, Gravier, we'll check in with you in just a moment. Great. My name is Emory Davis. I'm the trainer here at Doroville. I keep things going in this area. Good day, Atlanta, and tell hi to my wife, Christine. <laughs> good day, Atlanta, and good work, Atlanta, is what they do here at the uh, GM plant in Doraville. One of the uh, 4,000 workers that, that uh, is on the line here, there are two shifts. One of them started at 6 o'clock. The other one's going to be coming in a little bit after 5 o'clock this afternoon. They work hard to put out these minivans that go all over the world. Also to come on Good Day Atlanta, we'll take you further inside the GM plant in Doraville. Get a glimpse of how they put all of those vans together. Much more from Doraville. And I'm Gravier Dinsa at the GM plant in Doraville. What you see behind me is the electrical inspection area. A couple of minutes ago, they were honking the horns here because this is where they check all sorts of things, like horns. We're going to take, there they go. We're going to take you inside the manager's showroom to show you the finished product coming up in just a minute. Work. And speaking of working, Gravier Dinza is out and about today. She's at the General Motors. I don't know what they do this. Do they do this at the assembly plant in Doraville, <laughs> Gravier? I don't think they, they do actually, much of that. They actually do do that in the fitness area, which oh, we showed you a little okay. while ago, and we'll go back to that a little bit later on. Right now, we are in the manager's showroom. I, we told you that they made five different makes of uh, vans here, including some that are sent overseas. This is it. This is the finished product. Coming up in the next couple of hours, we're going to be uh, taking you inside to show you exactly how these vans are put together and talking to some more of the workers. And we'll find out about robots that are used here. All that coming up in the next couple of hours. Back to you guys in the studio. Sounds good. 
And we're back at the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville. Coming up in the next hour of Good Day Atlanta, we're going to take you inside to show you some of the robots that are used here. 474 of them, in addition to the more than 4,000 employees here at the plant. Coming up. And we're back at the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville. What you're looking at is the, uh, the undercarriage area of the plant. This is where the top of these vans are sort of married to the bottom, where they're sort of squished together as they come across the assembly line. This is probably the middle of production here for these vans. This is by no means the finished product. Now, you might be surprised to know that we are standing in just a tiny, tiny portion of this 3.56 million square foot facility. The vans here, as I said, are sort of uh, halfway finished. Now, about a 10-minute walk from here is where it all begins. Starts off as a slab of raw metal. GM breaks up its Doraville plant into four sections. The assembly process begins in the body shop. That's where the sparks start to fly. Robots weld the underbody together, then attach the two sides and drop the roof into place. Next, workers install the doors, the lift gate, and the hood. And what's basically a ski lift takes the frame up to the second floor. That's section two of the plant where all the painting goes on. First, the frames are cleaned. Then they plunge into a 72,000 gallon tank of primer. Ovens bake the paint onto the frame and then the van rolls into a clean room. There, robots apply color and clear coat paint in computer programmed paths. After some manual finishing, it's back to the ski lift. Next up, section three, general assembly one. The doors come off. A fully assembled cockpit slides into the frame. Workers guide all the glass, the carpets, and the seats onto the van. And it's on to section four, general assembly two. The cars descend to the line and get fuel tanks and batteries. Meanwhile, robots are precisely building engines and axles, which make up the chassis. The chassis then gets married to the body. Bumpers and tires go on. All that's left is a series of tests and inspections. And then the van heads out to the shipping gate. We're back at the undercarriage area. You guys are working hard. <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm um, hooking up the uh, CV unit here. Up underneath. Up underneath. So this is, this is where the bottom gets married to the top. Again, this is just a middle section of assembly on these vans. As we showed you earlier, I was in the fitness center actually working out. Ha ha. Melissa had a chance to uh, take a closer look at the fitness center, and that's where she is now. Melissa, you working on the treadmill? No, no, no. I'll let you do that easy treadmill stuff. I'm pumping here. I'm pumping. Talk about working hard. Just kidding. This is a really great fitness center. It's very convenient for the 4,000 folks who work out there on the production floor. And we're going to show you more about the fitness center later on. But right now, nothing is more important than going to Ken's Quiz. Today's category is... I actually, by the way, I don't like to sit this close to you while I do Ken's Quiz, but that's okay. If you go over to the couch. No, that's okay. We, okay, we yeah. Like Today's category is, because, you know, they're down at GM Doraville, so it's there. car colors. Car colors. Car colors. All right. Can you name, in order, the three most popular car colors? I can name the three most popular ones that get stopped by police. <laughs> that wouldn't you be you. Would not, not from personal experience, but I've read and heard about. Gravier, what are you seeing on car colors down there? Don't give us the answer now. Well, you know what? I got, I got to tell you that the paint area is actually a floor above us, and it's off limits because if any speck of dust or dirt gets on those things, you wow. got to start over. Ah. So we're not allowed up there, but hey. Well, you're going to have to take somebody's stuff. word for it then. <laughs> All right, we're going to be coming back from the General Motors assembly plant in just a little bit. Back to you guys in the studio. You're watching Good Day Atlanta with Gurveer Dinza, Paul Osman, and Ken McLeod. Good Day Atlanta returns in a month. Uh, General Motors assembly plant getting a mic test here because it gets kind of noisy in yes. this place. That's right, you got it. Randy Thayer is the uh, the plant manager here. Thanks for joining us. And Gene Spivey is the local chairman of the UAW. Thanks a bunch for joining us. Randy, let me start with you. 
this place started out with 500 employees and you've grown so much you've almost doubled your workforce in the last year and a half two years tell me why well the, the 500 certainly dates back a few years oh, to yeah. 1947 when this plant first opened but you're right we did add the second shift here when the minivan was tooled back into this plant the uh, second shift was added and you're right we're, we're slightly over 4,000 employees today and any other reason why you added so many people it was mainly the second shift employees per shift is about the same as when this plant built the cutlass supreme and you guys are very active in the community as well absolutely uh, we support the community in a lot of different ways of course united way we have other grants to some of the local university and of course our care and share program gene's uh, a bigger pro at the care and share program that we do jointly every year for for christmas time yeah gene let me ask you about uh, about the united auto workers i mean it, it, so many times we hear that the union just isn't as strong as it used to be of course many many years ago it was powerful tell me how active you guys are here at this plant well we we uh fortunate that the international union and the corporation negotiated a lot of joint programs which uh, we're involved in real deeply. Everything we do now is joint, and uh, it's a real good program they talk about. They got a suggestion plan, the employees get rewarded for that, and they run it. Uh, they're involved in a lot of decision making. All right, well, we appreciate you guys joining us this morning. Thanks for having us at, at the, uh, the plant. And coming up here on Good Day Atlanta, we're gonna show you, you know, we talked about this being a worldwide operation. We're gonna show you vans. Some of them have steering wheels on the left, some of them steering wheels on the right. We'll tell you why coming up in just a minute. She's real fine, my 409. She's real fine, my 409. My 409, yes. As we take a look at the, the cars lining up one after another, getting ready to move on out to consumers in Doraville. We're going to hear from Gravier in just a second. The We're back at the General Motors assembly plant. We're in the uh, the manager's showroom again. As we talked about a little while ago, these vans are sent all over the world. Some of them are just for here in the U.S. As you could walk around here with me just a minute, Gus. This van here has a steering wheel on the side that you would you would expect the left-hand side, right? But take a look at this. Take a look at this van. Not what you would expect to see here in the U.S., right? steering wheel on the right those of course are for export and joining us to talk about all of this is fred shaftsma who is with van global joining us now from detroit good morning good morning Gervier. as you might imagine a little bit cooler here in detroit but glad i could join you via satellite talk about uh the export of these vans overseas i know the opal is is one of those how big a business is that for gm well it's a very significant business and you know we ship uh, vans from Doraville to some literally 40 countries besides North America and the right-hand drive is just one of those examples so the Opal is one of those what other uh, what other make of van would you be talking about well we also sell the, the Vauxhall which is the right-hand drive version that you just looked at and we also send, sell the Chevrolet Transport to many other countries uh, throughout Europe and in fact Asia how much of GM's business is a is the uh, overseas export business mr. Shaftsma well, you know, it continues to grow significantly. You, actually, 10% of Doraville's volume, or actually perhaps a little more, goes abroad. So that's a very significant thing, and that's a big challenge for us. Yeah, all right. Because, well, no, go ahead. Uh, well, what we need to do, of course, the challenge to us is satisfying customers all over the world, and they have some very significant different needs. Yeah, all right. Well, we thank you very much for joining us from Detroit. Yeah, you're right. The weather's a little bit better here. Thanks a lot. Good day, Atlanta. We'll be back with more from the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville coming up in just a couple of minutes. Those robots that we told you about, they do certain jobs here, and there's a possibility that maybe doing a little bit more coming up. And, of course, Gravier's roaming around the General Motors assembly plant in Doraville. I wonder if they're having her make any cars. I don't know, but she's been hanging around with some uh, rather unusual workers. Gravier, I don't know if I should say that. I don't want the UAW mad at me oh, calling no, no, exactly. the workers. I, I tell you what, these guys work hard, and they've been very patient with us, kind of getting, you know, getting out of our way when, uh, when they need to, and we get out of their way when we need to, and that's quite a bit. You know, all morning long we've been seeing some of the workers that, that are working on these vans here, the men and the women. But you know what? 
they work side by side with robots here. Robots sort of came into the picture uh, in 1970, in the 1970s throughout the U.S. into the GM plant here in Doraville in 1981. Reliable robots doing the same job time after time with no complaints and few mistakes. Very once in a while we, we do have a robot that fails, but it's a uh, very once in a while. There are programs to accomplish precise tasks, welding parts, for instance. But how do the robots hit the exact spots on different vans and cars? By reading computer codes on each car part. He'll step in the cell and tell the robot through a computer, I'm an automobile, a pony, or a Chevrolet, do what you need to do. Then in a millisecond, the robot uh, uh, Confirm that the information is correct and go ahead and do its job. When cars and their parts go through design changes, the robots are reprogrammed. Every time that we get a new uh, uh, model, we uh, we go in the robots and uh, make the proper changes. You've probably heard the criticism that robots put many auto workers out of work. But GM defends automation. Mostly. The robot has taken the place of the hard uh, jobs where the, it was really hard for the person to do a welding or to do something with a welding gun. But at the same time, we have, uh, we have more people on the skilled trades to learn how to operate the robot, how to maintain, how to program them. robots really work on the early stages of the van production here at GM. There is talk that uh, they may be used to put windshields on sometime uh, down the line, sometime in the future, but that hasn't been decided yet. We'll talk about that more a little bit later on. Paul and Ken, back to you in the studio. I tell you what, I am learning a lot here at GM. Kavir, mm -hmm. what is it, about 1,050 cars, uh, vans yeah, a day that roll off the line? Absolutely. A, a van a minute. Van Isn't that minute. amazing? Man, that is incredible. I've come a long way from 50 years ago when they did like 20 a day. Yeah, you know? really. <laughs> Much more from the General Motors plant in Doraville. We will indeed. One of the key things here at Doraville is to get uh, the workers excited about their jobs. And we're going to talk to a guy who won a van here for an idea that he came up with to make work more efficient from General Motors in Doraville. From Fox 5 Eyewitness News. Day Atlanta continues. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Friday morning, the sixth day of February, and we're glad you could spend a few moments with us this morning. And, and we're making cars. We're learning a lot about car making. Making yes. those vans, right? Exactly. One a minute. Yes. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that's just amazing. Well, you think about that. Think yeah. about that. One a minute. My gremler took 18 seconds and uh, to make, but that would explain a lot of my troubles <laughs> that I had. But anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Gravir Dinza, who's learning how many people right here in metro atlanta build cars that are seen around the world that's yeah. right she has donned those ever fashionable safety goggles and she is down at the general motors <laughs> assembly plant in doraville morning yeah. Rivera. good morning it. you guys i tell you what you got to wear these safety goggles because you know, you're working with so much equipment here these folks are that safety is the top priority here as you mentioned you got about four thousand people that work uh, at the general motors plant they put millions of dollars into the economy now, of course, the vans go through a rigorous testing process before they hit the streets. So coming up in this hour of Good Day Atlanta, we're going to show you the uh, squeak and rattle room. Does that sound interesting? Squeak gotta, and rattle? Well, yeah. you got to check out and make sure that the vans are in good shape oh, okay. before uh, folks like uh, you and me drive them, right? Sounds like my son's room, the squeak <laughs> and rattle room. It sounds like Paul's gremlin, too, doesn't yeah, it? it? Anyway, does. we'll show you that coming up a little bit later on. Okay. Back to you guys in the studio. All right. That did a lot worse than squeaking and rattling. I certainly did. <laughs> All right, we have arrived at the answer portion of Ken's quiz, the category this Friday, since Gravira is learning the ropes at GM Doraville, mm -hmm. is car colors. Car colors. Car colors. And the question is, can you name, in order, in the order, three the most topic. popular car colors? I will go with aqua. <laughs> okay, that's not good. <laughs> I what do you go think, with... Gravira? No, man, you know what? Since Paul usually has help with Ken's quiz, I decided that I would get some help, too. Joni Rainbolt is joining us now. I think that's she the color is the right assistant there. brand manager for uh, one of the brands here at, at GM, and she's going to help me out. So she may not know the top three car colors, but she knows what the top three van colors are. There you go. What are they? 
the, the number one color is really white, yep. believe it or not. White. I think beige is next, then we go to dark teal right here next to me. Dark teal, which what is dark. What do you think, Ken? Dark teal, which we'll, we'll go with dark green, would be number two. That would be number see, two. all over it. How about number right. three, though? That's number right. three. Number not three, the, we don't not know. Not the tan. Number three is going to be red. Red. Yeah, medium, you are correct, medium red. As a matter of fact, there red. are the stats there on the screen. 18.9. What color is your percentage? Clark, Ken? White. No, I've never had any of these. Dark green, 17.3. <laughs> medium red, 11.2% of the cars out there. My last two cars were white and dark green. I never had a white yeah. car. So Gruber, you ever had a white car? It's dirty quickly. No, I never have. Had a white pickup truck, but not a white car. The, so. Is that the one Paul fixed? Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> So maybe I, maybe I can learn how to fix my own cars while I'm here at GM this morning. <laughs> joining me now, as I said, is Joni Rainbow. Joni, thank you for joining us this Great. morning. Glad to be here. You guys turn out an amazing number of vans every year. And, you know, minivans, when you think minivan, you think, eh, you know, for mom to haul the kids around. But they really have turned into luxury cars, haven't They're they? They're really very versatile. People don't look at them as just a, a car hauler for stuff for people anymore. They use it as... They expect it to be their car. Yeah, why don't you show me around? This sure. is the one we're looking at. This is the Oldsmobile Silhouette. All right. One of the one of the great features people want about minivans is convenience, and they want to have uh, all the amenities that just right. like a luxury car. One of the great features we offer on the Silhouette as standard is a power sliding door. All right, have it's at one it. One of those that you, uh, once you have a power sliding door, you'd never want to live without it. It's easy when you're walking up to the door. Uh, let show the kids show them this, because all you did is punch a button. The remote control works here. You can just walk up and and uh, push it on your way in from the grocery. The kids are running on ahead of you. They can get in the door. You can get it closed and you know it's secure. So Not you don't have bad. to walk around and shut it. All right. We also have the second sliding door standard on as the well. other side. Coming from the other side. Okay. As you come around the back, one of the other great features we have, let me pop this open, is of course a storage net. Vans are infamous for having a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of stuff to put in a van as well as carrying a lot of people. But say you're coming from the grocery store and you've got way more groceries than you thought. I mean, right. I do that all the time. Oh my gosh, I don't have enough room to fit it in here. Well, with a silhouette, you can just pop the seats down and you have instantaneous cargo storage. Well, lots of room, so not only for the groceries, but for me with all my dogs. That's right. Throw them in the sure. back. <laughs> Very versatile. All right. That's about a minivan. What else? On the other side, one of the great things about having kids and, and, and I have two sons as well, is if you're driving and you want some peace and quiet. We have a rear audio system in this silhouette, which um, the, the rear passengers can listen to the CD or a cassette or the Braves game or whatever. Mm -hmm. The front passengers, you can either have it peace and quiet because they're listening to it on headsets, so you don't hear Mom anything. and Dad don't have to listen to that no. stuff, then. and they can listen to, their, to whatever music great. they want to listen to or they can actually have a conversation. All right. So jo it's great. Joni, thanks very much for okay. joining us this morning. Great. As we mentioned to you a couple of minutes ago, one of the workers here, one a van. We're going to talk to him about uh, his idea that got him that whole the project and uh, and why he won. We're going to talk to him in just a second. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Bill Perkins. I work at GM. I contain the defects, and I'd like to say hi to my wife, Ann, and good day, Atlanta. Hard at work right there. We'll be checking with Gravier in just a second. Hi, folks. Melissa Sander here, your road warrior, and I'm in the bumper section, you know, where they put on bumpers. And look over here. See, they're going to get ready to put one on the front any second. Well, you know, it takes tens of thousands of parts to build these vans, right? And sure, they have a lot of the parts out here, like, you know, these big ones, the bumper, and then all these, you know, little ones. But they don't have all of them out here because that would clutter up the area and get in everyone's way. So, uh, so where do they keep them all? I know you're wondering. Well, our photojournalist at Fox 5, Gustavo Valdez, is about to show you exactly what is kept where and how it's brought here when it's needed. We're currently standing on one of the busiest receiving docks in General Motors. We unload approximately 300 trailers a day, of which 150 of them are unloaded here on this dock. What you see behind me is an automated, re automated receiving system that allows us to unload seats that are manufactured at our supplier. The supplier loads in the seats exactly in the same sequence that we build the product here at the assembly plant. As you can see, the seats are being unloaded without any human intervention. That improves the quality as we deliver the product to our customers. It's extremely important that we provide the manufacturing groups all the floor space that is required to manufacture the vehicle. That required us to develop, as you can see, a typical supermarket. If you can envision a supermarket, 
you walk in, every part has its place. Each container will has a full card inside the container. When the operator on the line uses the first card out of that container, he actually mails the card. And then a route driver, a material route driver, comes by, picks up the card, and replenishes the material flow rack. What it has done is it has reduced the floor space that is required for the operator online and it enables us to put more parts in a smaller footprint. See, and this is, this is it right here. This is where those cards are slipped to let the folks in the supermarket know to bring by more supplies. Think of it like those flags that you put up on your, uh, on your mailbox to let the postman know that you've got a letter waiting. Anyway, we're going to toss it back now from the fabulous bumper area. How's it going? Say hi to someone on Good Day Atlanta. <laughs> so cheery. And that's how we're going to toss it back to Paul and Ken. All right. Thank you, Thanks a lot, Melissa. Well, stay tuned to Good Day Atlanta. Hi, I'm Deborah Kenimer, and I am the paint mutilation inspector for GM. Good day, Atlanta. I am Modestine Johnson from the Doraville plant. Good day, Atlanta. All right, getting those vans ready to go. The color of red, too, is one of our favorite colors, or one of the top colors. Third, Ken's pointing, the third favorite color of cars and vans. And meet a man who got a free car from his boss. We'll show you how he got it when we take you back live at the GM plant in Doraville. Hi, I'm Bobby Alexander. I'm repairman for General Motors. Good day, Atlanta. Ah, yes, working away at the GM plant, uh, behind the cars and all the equipment. Behind all up. those open doors, huh? Exactly right. And, and speaking of which, we want to go back to Gravier now, who has a very happy person with her. How happy is he, Gravier? reason, that's right. Listen, you got that right. You guys ever had an idea that you thought would save your company a whole lot of money and then decided to tell them about it, make everybody's job a little bit easier? Well, there's a guy here at GM who did that, and he got quite a prize for his idea. Johnny L. Collins. You are definitely seeing a happy man in that video. Johnny Collins and six other workers here at GM won brand new minivans for their ideas. Now, Johnny got to drive his new van for the very first time last Friday, thanks to a, a rather unusual program here at GM. And Johnny joins us this morning. Johnny Collins, thanks a lot. Thank you. Were you surprised? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, you've worked here, what, 35 years? This coming April will be 35 years. And Johnny is what you call, call a trainer here. A tra uh, you sort of watch what the other workers do, make sure they're doing it right. Yes, ma'am. I guess you've had to see a lot of changes over the last 35 years, too, and had to train yourself uh, in one respect. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of different changes made in 35 years. Now, tell us about the idea that you came up with and, and how you came up with it. Well, we needed something to put our glass in, so I come up with building a rack to put our glass in to uh, keep it from getting scratched. So you're talking about all the glass in the windows, that sort of thing? Just the sliding door glass. So the idea you came up with, what, so what do you put it on now? We put it on a rack uh -huh. that's covered to keep, uh, so it won't scratch either side of it. So when you pull it, they go to pull it out and put the, the glass in. We don't have to worry about scratches. How did you do it before then? Well, that was a new thing that was starting out. Okay. All right. And lots of changes, as I said, in the last uh, couple of years, especially you've added the workforce because you've got a, a stamping facility here now. Tell us about that a little bit. Where well, you get I don't... Stamp the, uh, the, you don't have to send out for parts in other parts of the country. It's, it's in, in part of our... We connected to our building here, just, to, just across, so they can go over with the tow motors and bring the material right straight from there to the job without having to ship it from one place to another. Terrific. Well, listen, congratulations on the new minivan. Enjoy it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You bet. Back to you guys in the studio, Ken and Paul. Hey, maybe we need to come up with an idea. We for certainly do. Five, huh? We might get a refrigerator magnet as a result. <laughs> well, after we've <laughs> we been here for 20 or 30 it. years, maybe we can come up with an exactly. idea. Exactly. Wouldn't that be nice? Thanks, Gurbir. We'll check with you in just a second. Lots more coming up from GM. You're watching Good Day Atlanta with Gurbir Dinza, Paul Osman, and Ken McLeod. 
Welcome back to Good Day Atlanta. Friday morning, the sixth day of February. Gravier is uh, working that assembly line down Certainly at GM Dorval. Do you notice how many veteran workers there are down Isn't there? Isn't that I mean, great? 30, 35 years. That have. means they're happy at what they're doing. That's got to mean that they really like it. I mean, if, if it was boring, you certainly would be getting out of it. If it wasn't at least some good pay, you'd be getting out of it. But they seem really content yeah, there, which is really nice. They're smiling. Yeah. They're smiling. Let's go ahead and uh, check in with Gravier right now. She yeah. is down at GM Dorville, and she is learning the ropes there on the assembly line. I tell you what, guys, what a great way to spend a Friday morning. And you're right about these people that work here that have been here, you know, 25, 35 years. The company really gives them incentives to keep their uh, morale up and to keep them going. Coming up, we're going to talk about the history of the plant. Started production in 1947. We'll tell you all about that. Also, you might wonder how people get around this huge place. It's 166 acres. So there's a kind of an unusual way that the workers travel around. We'll show you that coming up, too. Sounds exciting. I know they're not walking. It's no. too much to cover. <laughs> too much to cover. Thanks, Gravier. We'll check with you in just a second. I want to head back to the General Motors plant. If you take 285, the Buford Highway, to get to work, you may drive right past this plant every single day. But, you know, very few people get an inside bird's eye view of this place. Yeah, Gravier is. Yes, she, she is. Good view yeah. of it this morning. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and check hey, in with her. Look at that. And you, you know what, guys? I, I'm one of those people that have driven by here a zillion times and always wondered what went on inside. Well, today we're getting a first-hand look at that. See this bicycle? Good thing it has three wheels <laughs> because I'm not sure I can make it if it was a two-wheeler. This is one of the ways that people get around this place because it's, like I said, 166 acres, 3.6 million square feet in this facility, and we're just in a fraction of that area. You know, of all the workers that are here, the more than 4,000, 811 of those people are women, and Melissa got a chance to spend some time with them. Melissa? Here. Right now, I'm in front of this great big employee information center board, and right now they are doing a salute to women workers and women in industry. And there are a lot of women here. Have we already told you that? Out of the 4,000 people on the production floor, you've got 811 of them are women. That's one out of every five. There's one right there. I wonder if she'll say, hi, hi. How you doing? It's good to see you. What, what's your name? Madge Gailey. This is Electrical Check. And you're having a good time this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, look how gorgeous sexy you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know why she's laughing. She looks great. Well, listen, we interviewed a couple women earlier, and we've got a little bit of their story. Listen. I've been here over 20 years, and since I've been here, we have always had women. That's because Lucretia was hired seven years after the first female joined the production crew in 1970. Lots of changes since then. We have more women supervisors, and we have more women in skilled trades, and um, basically all over, more women in the body shop. I started on the line as a press person, and then from a press person, I went into a, a, a apprenticeship. Fifteen years and many jumps later, Joyce McCain is manager of the stamping plant where car parts are stamped out of sheet metal. Joyce worked hard to gain respect to prove herself. I think that because the men are not used to women being in the workforce, they, they tend to think that you can't perform. But all you have to do is put forth that extra effort and women can come through the same way. Now other women look to Joyce as a role model and mentor. We are women. There is a feminist side of us, but then at the same time, we put forth the same effort as any other human and doing a great job. And we do a fantastic job at, at anything that we put our mind to. And I am here with another one of the sexy, gorgeous women here at GM Doraville, Diane Chapman. Diane, what do you do? I'm an inspector in final process. And how long have you been working here at Doraville? 25 years. Man, so you were one of the first women in here, too. Well, actually, actually, the first hired them in 70. I got to come in 72. I got hired in, so it's been wonderful for me. Uh, have you felt a big change in the way you're treated by the men here? Maybe they looked at you and thought, yeah, you can't do it at first? <laughs> well, I think that's the way it is in a lot of places, but here, I just... In the 25 years I've been here, we've all worked together and we work in teams, and it just works wonderfully well. 
And, and, I, and I've witnessed that. There doesn't yes. seem to be any sort of discrimination. No, 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 no. absolutely none. We have women in material driving forklifts. We got women repairing automobiles. We got all kinds of you know, women in every department doing different things, just like the men. We're all equal here. It's exactly. wonderful. Exactly. Yes, so nice meeting you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. So nice to be here, and I'm so glad you came out here to talk to us. This is great. Thank you. You hear that, Gervier? It's I'm, great. I'm telling you, it is great. And you know what else is great is the job that these women do, because they do have the respect of the men that work here. They work just as hard, if not twice as hard, as the guys. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to take you outside to the test track area. How does that? How is that van going to do under certain road conditions? We're going to find out. You're watching Good Day Atlanta with Gervier Dinza, Paul Osman, and Ken McLeod. Good Day Atlanta returns in a moment. Good Day Atlanta. I'm D.L. Harris. I'm the health and safety instructor for Doraville Plant. Good Day Atlanta. Tom Gravier ends up back in Doraville at the GM plant. Take a look at this picture right here. This is what the GM plant used to look like when they first started the, uh, the assembly here many, many years ago. Fifty years ago, they started making uh, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks here. Boy, has it changed in the last 50 years. They just celebrated their 50th anniversary at the end of last year. It all started, as I said, in 1947 at the end of World War II. U.S. troops began marching home in August of 1945. Three months later, General Motors broke ground in Doraville. The company started production inside the $6 million plant in November of 1947. Workers supplied suburban America with Oldsmobiles back then, but the plant grew and changed. Over the years, Chevrolets started rolling off the assembly line next to Olds, Buick, and Pontiac cars. New technology made the line more automated and more efficient. <coughs> then, in the 90s, Doraville changed over to vans and into the booming business you see today. Yeah, that booming business is, uh, is worldwide now. The uh, vehicles from Doraville go all over the world now. Through this February, the plant has produced more than 7.2 million vehicles. Not bad. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to tell you about a rather unique program that GM is, is doing. Celebrities from all over the country are designing vans for a very special cause, to fight breast cancer. It's called Concept Cure. We'll tell you about it in just a couple of minutes. The vans continue to roll down the assembly line here at the GM plant in Doraville. Coming up, we're going to take you outside to the test track. So stay with us. Right now, let's go over to Paul. And at putting their product to the test, see how General Motors makes sure everything that comes out of their Doraville plant is in top shape. That's coming up. When Good Day Atlanta returns, we will head back out to Doraville. There's more to see than just the assembly line there. They've got a place outside to drive all those vans to test them. And we'll show you that after this. From Fox 5 Eyewitness News, Good Day Atlanta continues. Welcome back. Thanks once again for joining us on this Friday morning, the sixth day of February. I'm in this chair for right for Gravier. Yeah, Gravier is out uh, learning all and showing us great sights. What's going on in Doraville at the General Motors assembly plant? She was after all the fashion statement when she went out there. She looks. She looks good. I like those glasses. I think you that's. Like those I, goggles, I think, right? think that's her look. <laughs> think that's her look. And. Uh, and you look good in khakis, and you look ready to build your first car or yeah, van. What are, yeah, what are you doing really? outside? Are you outside? Yeah, we actually moved outside of the plant, away from the assembly line. This is a real high-tech area. It's got, it actually has a high-tech name, the Squeak and Rattle Room. Uh -oh. And Paul Allen's here to tell us what they do here. Good Please. morning, Paul. Good morning. Uh, what we do out here is we are able to find noises on the vehicle, and especially get underneath the vehicle, get underneath the instrument panel without the vehicle moving down the track. It's a lot safer, it's a lot faster. We can find a noise here in minutes that would take hours if you didn't have a machine that simulated the road. So, uh, Can I get inside? Absolutely. I'm going to crawl in the, or I climb in the van, not crawl, inside the van, and Paul, you do what you do, okay? Have at it. Okay. And what you're listening for here is any sort of noise listening for any noise and we do a lot of listening on the track and then we come in here to find where the problem's coming from 
this is really more of a tool to find problems after we've heard them on the track than it is to find the noise in the first place. So for somebody like me who may have a vehicle, I'm going down the road and I hear a funny noise, you guys test all that out before it even gets to me. Yeah, we try to simulate the worst roads you'd ever find in America before it ever leaves this planet. Atlanta has such nice roads that without a machine like this or test, like, test tracks like we have out there, we couldn't do that. The squeak and rattle room, high-tech stuff. Yeah. All right, Paul Allen, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we're going to take you out to the test track in just a couple of minutes, and I'm going to sit and listen to this thing squeak and rattle. Back to you guys in the studio. Yes, hey, you can hear anything. Shake, rattle, and roll. It's good that they get that out, though, because you know how annoying. You ever had a car that did that? You're old gremlin, I know. Yeah, I did, all the time. yes. Yeah, I mean, it squeaks, and you can't figure out where it's coming from. It's somewhere hidden behind the dashboard exactly. that you it's can't good. get to it. Yeah. We're going to go back out to the GM plant where Melissa Sander is doing her thing with road warring. And she's, uh, oh, the step class is underway, Melissa. She's you not squeaking what? or this rattling. Is, this, is, this is break time. You're behind. This is uh, 8.30 until 9 is break time. And this fitness center <laughs> just gets packed. So they got this aerobics class. And look, there's guys and girls. See? And up here, this line of, of bikes here. And, and then this hole over here, behind us over here. Tons of people. Michelle Spring, you run this place. And uh, why is it so important for everyone to come here and get fit? Because they've got fitness centers at, you know, all kinds of offices and plants. Well, I think in every walk of life, it's important to be healthy and well. And having the fitness center here helps the GM employees stay that way and have a quality life both on and off the job. But a lot of stress on the job because they got a quota to keep, right? And take a look at all these people over here. So it, I guess it's extra important that they get stress off the job or maybe even build up so that they're prepared to deal with the job and they have to have to lift. When you're healthy and well, um, stress is easier to handle and it helps you to stay injury free and just, again, enjoy a quality life. Now, check this out. This is the slogan here, live for life. Doesn't that sound like a soap opera? One life to live for life. What does that even mean, live for life? What the heck is that? You gotta make it work. Live for life. All right, hey, we want to introduce you to someone over here. This is Monet Holmes. Monet, you started working out here when? I started working out the 1st of May, 97. And, and you've lost, I've, between then and now? I've lost 40 pounds between the first three months, and now I'm just maintaining them. Come on, strike a pose. Now, you didn't just come off the floor. I mean, No, I, I'm on the night shift, so I just came in to do this. Special to show off her bod. Okay, so I guess we're going to say goodbye now and toss it back to Gravier just after this man says hello. How you doing? Say, say now we're going to go to Gravier Denza. Now we're going to go and review Denza. No, Gravier Denza. Go for you, Denza? Oh, never mind. Gravier <laughs> Denza, <up> to you. <laughs> Melissa, we're outside. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you, but we're on what is called the test track, as Paul Allen mentioned just a couple of minutes ago. They test these GM vans before they get sent out on, on the roads. We've got some video of what they do here. What they do is actually put the vans out on different test conditions. Paul, talk about that just a little bit. You test, what, 20 or 30 vans a day? That's right, and what we try to do is we try to achieve real-world conditions. We've got spalled concrete, we have rough road. This represents the types of things you might get in the Midwest with frost heaves and things like that. We don't get that in Atlanta, so it gives us a chance right outside our door to put this car through the worst thing a customer is going to see and make sure that when they get the vehicle, they don't have squeaks and rattles. And uh, it's extremely helpful. It makes our job a lot faster. We can do more cars than we could if we had to go out on public roads. It's a really powerful tool. So have you, have you tested vehicles here and then have to, have had to send them back inside to fine-tune some things sometimes? We test the vehicles out here, and then we'll bring them inside. If, especially if we hear something, perhaps we hear something under the vehicle, we'll put it on the simulator, and then we can walk under the vehicle while the simulator's running and very safely find out what it is that's causing a noise. And sometimes we try out new designs here. An engineer will say, uh, I'd like to do this. Will it cause a problem with squeak and rattle? They'll send me the parts, put them on the car, and we'll drive them out here. Great. Paul Allen, thanks very much. And speaking of designs, we mentioned just a couple of minutes ago that there are some famous people, celebrities, all over the country that are helping to design the outside of the vans for a very special cause. It's called Concept Cure to help fight breast cancer. Rosie O'Donnell's even involved. We'll tell you about it in just a couple of minutes. Still to come on Atlanta's only local news from 6 to 9 a.m. Find out what Rosie O'Donnell has to do with the GM plant and why that's good news for so many people. Stay tuned. My name is Ronald Reynolds, and I'm a trainer in Group 4 Bodyside at Doriel Plant. Good day, Atlanta.
All right, Lance, thanks very much. We're back at General Motors here uh, in Doraville. I'm joined by Sue Kaplan with General Motors. They're here to tell us about a, a unique program that GM is involved in called Concept Cure. And, and Sue, tell me a little bit more about it. Okay, Concept Cure is General Motors' charity to raise funds and awareness for breast cancer. And this is the second year of operation. From what I understand, it's where uh, celebrities like Tommy Hilfiger will actually design the outside of a van, and that all goes to, to, to help fight breast cancer, That's right? That's absolutely right. We have four one-of-a-kind vehicles. One is the Chevy Venture, designed for us by Joe Boxer. Uh, they do inside and out, and they form part of the sweepstakes. So when customers call in to donate money for breast cancer, at the same time they're entered to win a sweepstakes to win one of these four one-of-a-kind vehicles. Terrific. And Rosie O'Donnell, of course, is involved because her mom died of breast cancer so she's helping you promote it she absolutely is and she has been fantastic we're sponsoring her Chevy Venture is sponsoring her for the month of February out in Los Angeles um, with her help we've already raised over seven hundred thousand dollars for concept cure and that's this year last year that's what you raised all year long exactly and Rosie's studio Warner Brothers has told us that the minute we hit one million dollars they will match our one million dollars not bad at all it's fantastic for a very good cause we thank you for joining us this morning to tell us more more about it. Thank you. And you know what? These folks here at GM have been absolutely terrific today. When we come back, Melissa and I get to take a ride in one of these vans. Coming up, don't go away. And before we go, we're going to go down once again to Gravier and back Melissa. Back on down. Yes, at the GM Doraville. Hey, what have you guys learned? What, what's been the most impressive thing that's happened in the past uh, three hours or while you were preparing for the show? You know, I, Melissa and I are together, I think that it's just watching how everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to do, and it just yeah. doesn't stop, you know? Things. We've sort of dodged and said, don't let me get in your way, right. and they just keep right on working. It doesn't phase them at all, and, and they've really been over backwards here at GM they to did. make us feel welcome. They the women so were terrific. The women are awesome. One out of five, and then, and then there was four out of five who were men were also awesome. And Everyone was very nice to us. Absolutely. Do you feel sort of like uh, Carol on, what, The Price is Right? <laughs> Look at this lovely new car. It can be yours. <laughs> oh, listen, it can be yours. You know, there are five different makes here. And, of course, some of them get sent overseas. It's just been that terrific. One. You like that one? No, that one gets sent overseas, and I do like mm -hmm, it. It's really mm -hmm. nice. The European models. And mm -hmm. this one's nice. So I, I like that I said green color. airplane models before. I said European airplane models. No, European models. <laughs> I love the, the colors. 40s. Yeah, the colors are They're terrific. Great, the new colors. All right, we, the red, wasn't that one of the top colors for Number three. Uh, number beer, number three, number three, medium red. All right. Look, like like we get to actually drive one of these things. Wow. When I say we, you want to toss a coin? You're going to do it or am I? No, that, that, that rock, scissors, paper thing. It's not one of those. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we all you want to remember how to it's do it. It's not one of the ones you guys put together, is it? No, are <laughs> okay, you kidding? Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm a little afraid. No, no, no. I drove us here this morning and we got here, didn't we? <laughs> oh, we okay. did indeed. So, so up safely. By the way, General Motors, thanks a bunch for making us feel thank welcome. Thank you. All the employees here. By the way, they're taking a break right now. They take, uh, they get two breaks plus lunch for the morning shift and again in the evening And they're shift. in the fitness center working out. Really? Like they don't wow, do enough work on the floor. I know. They're working I out know. So they're getting a good break. They need it. They deserve it. Let's go take a drive. What do you think? Okay. Oh, All right. I'll drive. I'll drive. I'm going to have to scoot the seat way up, you know. Now, what kind of car, what kind of van are you getting into, Gervier? What kind of van is this? Take a look, Melissa. What is that? It's a luxury model. Luxury it's, model. It's wow. a, it's Golden a, style. I don't know. What kind I don't of van know is cars. You know, it's, it's someday they're going to say to me, model. what All right. does the getaway car look like? It's a, it's a venture. All and right. they're going to say, venture. what does the getaway car look like? And I'll say, I don't know what, four wheels. Buckle up our seat belts here. Okay. Buckle up. Buckle up. Have fun. You guys might be able to become honorary members of the United Auto Workers. <laughs> I don't know. You think they'd let us? No. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye. Drive off. The radio's on. We'll see you tomorrow. There they go. Don't run in clear out of their oh, way. Yes, definitely clear out of the way. Gus, get out of the way. <laughs> oh. Gus, get Look out, out way. Gus. We don't want to hit you. <laughs> One more car on the road. Gervier Dinza behind the wheel. Oh my gosh, the world's not safe now.